Snickety snickety snoing, it's time for another Cygnus Destroyer review. The new film X-Men Apocalypse is about to hit cinema, so I decided to mark the occasion by taking a look at some marvelous licensed tie-ins. There have been a ton of X-Men games over the years, including the arcade beat-em-up masterpiece and the infamous LJN NES title, but I'm going to save those for a different video and instead put the focus on six lesser known entries in the series, starting with... X-Men Children of the Atom was unleashed upon arcades by Capcom in 1994 and was ported to the Sega Saturn by Acclaim a year later. Capcom had a streak of fantastic fighters in the 90s and this continued that tradition of excellence. Children of the Atom takes after the proven Street Fighter 2 formula with a 6 button punch and kick configuration and quarter circle special moves but up the ante from the genre titan with the addition of the X meter. As the characters deal out damage the X meter builds up and once the meter is full, performing a quarter circle forward and simultaneously pressing the three punch buttons will dish out an ultra powerful attack. You win! Everything about Children of the Atom is A plus quality, from the Jim Lee roster with such heavy hitters as Storming Colossus to the jaw dropping animations and energetic music. With the exception of some really cheap AI issues, Children of the Atom is a phenomenal fighter and it's rightfully respected for paving the way for the massively popular Marvel vs. Capcom titles. Fans of that franchise and fighting games in general should definitely check this out. Continuing the trend of 1994 releases is the original Game Gear X-Men title. This handheld entry is similar to its Genesis older sibling, but obviously scaled down in resolution. The premise is basically that most of Professor X's students have been kidnapped by Magneto, and it's up to Cyclops and Wolverine to stop the evil fiend's schemes. Upon beginning a session, there are only three levels to choose from, but more are unlocked as the initial ones are completed and the rescued colleagues are added to the selection screen. Since this is an 8-bit adventure, the presentation has a strong Master System vibe, but the visuals are surprisingly advanced for the platform and do a great job of capturing the likeness of the signature heroes and villains. I owned this portable cartridge when I was a kid, and a wave of nostalgia filled my heart with warmth as I sat down to play it after all these years, but setting the nostalgia aside revealed that the core mechanics are quite flawed. The biggest problem area that I noticed was in regards to the hit detection, which is really bad, and I rarely engaged in close quarters combat without taking damage. Fortunately, the health bar is pretty generous and there are refill icons to be collected around the stage, so it was an annoyance that I was able to cope with. In spite of the hit detection issues and the limited abilities, this tiny tie-in is far from terrible and it can be picked up on the cheap, so I would still recommend it to handheld enthusiasts. Jumping 10 years ahead to 2004, it's X-Men Legends, which was published by Activision and developed by Raven Software, the duo who would go on to produce Marvel Ultimate Alliance. X-Men Legends laid the foundation for that successful entry in the 7th console generation with its isometric beat-em-up style and the utilization of four character teams comprised of top-tier mutants including Iceman, Rogue, and Jean Grey. Unlike the Sega portable offering, X-Men Legends places an equal emphasis on presentation and gameplay. The titular stars appear in their Ultimate Universe costumes and Raven Software, with the help of the voice actors, nailed their personalities. Hey, it's nice to see my name's gotten around. Did the other girls tell you what a cool dude I am? No, but Jean Grey warned me to keep an eye on you. Oh, well, don't believe everything Jean says. She still hasn't forgiven me for that little incident in the changing room. Man, you enter one room without knocking and you're branded for life. 
The controls are fairly standard, but solid. There are two attack buttons, and mashing between them produces various combos, while the mutant abilities are accessed in their own separate menu. These powers are fueled by a limited meter, but luckily it automatically refills after it's exhausted. As our heroes continue to take out the enemy forces, they'll gain experience points and level up in an RPG-esque fashion. The points can be used to increase the total health and strengthen their offensive and defensive capabilities, allowing the squad to battle Mystique, Blob, and the other forces without breaking a sweat. X-Men Legends is a Marvel comic come to life, and as a huge fan of the previously addressed spiritual successor, I instantly fell in love with it. There's something here for everyone, plus it has hilariously cheesy henchmen dialogue. You are destined to lose, X-Men. The game's over, X-Men! If that doesn't make you want to try this out, I don't know what will. Thanks for playing. This is impossible! Activision is back at it with X-Men The Official Game, which was released on May 16th, 2006. The cleverly named Z-Axis Limited Production connects with the initial trilogy of films and spotlights the solo missions of Nightcrawler, Iceman, and Wolverine. The protagonists resemble their movie counterparts, and their dialogue was recorded by Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, and the rest of the cast, providing authenticity and justifying the official stamp on the label. The action again centers around 3D brawling, but it's enhanced with platforming, flight simulation, and even stealth elements. To the best of my knowledge, this is the first time that Nightcrawler's teleportation was utilized in a fully open environment, and the results are remarkable and a lot of fun. I was impressed with the amount of variety that Z Axis Limited tossed into the mix. The overall aesthetic is pleasant, the controls are tight, and the inclusion of the cast is a nice touch. There are a few flaws, such as Colossus's lack of a Russian accent. To whispering, it's getting louder. I don't hear anything. Stop it! And the aggravating Iceman segments, but I believe that this official tie-in is better than the critics made it out to be, and it's definitely worth checking out for the option to play as the badass Hugh Jackman Wolverine. Speaking of which... Hugh Jackman reprises his trademark role in Activision's X-Men Origins Wolverine, which came out on May 1st, 2009. The movie that this is based on is pretty much universally despised, so the odds were that the game would be equally terrible, but Amaze Entertainment pulled off the impossible and created a very good virtual adaptation. Amaze did a great job of sticking to the source material, and I appreciated that they retained the transition from the bone to adamantium claws during Logan's quest to avenge the death of his girlfriend. I can't vouch for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions, but I can attest to the fact that the Wii release features intense hack and slash beat em up action that is benefited by the use of the Wiimo and Nunchuck. Logan slices and dices adversaries via B and Z, while C will block enemy blows, and the D-pad makes him roll and dodge evasively. The minus button activates the feral sense, which allows us to see invisible trails and sentinel observers that need to be destroyed. The Wii's motion controls are implemented for leaping across tricky chasms, as well as opening doors and fending off the vicious advances of Creed through quick time events. All in all, Origins is an amazing licensed brawler and one of the best X-Men titles that was ever made. Unless you hate motion controls or don't own a Wii, there's no reason that you shouldn't give it a try. I guarantee you'll enjoy it. Where do you think you're going, eh? It's a bad time. Now step aside. We don't need you stinking up the joint, pal. You ain't leaving here till you know your place. Oh, is someone here gonna give me a fight? You got one. <laughs> you ain't so tough. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I can't stop the bleeding! Wow, a mediocre movie led to a good game. Who would have seen that coming? X-Men Origins Wolverine absolutely puts the X in excellent and will be tough to surpass, but I have one final X title that just might do it. Here it is, in all its glory. 
X-Men Mutant Apocalypse was released in November 1994 by Capcom. Mutant Apocalypse comes out of the gate strong with one of the most rockin' chip tunes I've ever heard and it's unrelenting in its awesomeness from beginning to end. Viewers that have watched my War of the Gems review should already be familiar with Mutant Apocalypse as this is its predecessor. The story is simple but satisfying. The X-Men have to travel to Genosha to rescue their imprisoned peers from the clutches of the devilish apocalypse. There are five different initial objectives that have to be completed and the team of Wolverine, Psylocke, Beast, Cyclops, and Gambit split up in order to tackle them individually. Mutant Apocalypse fuses platforming with brawling to create one of the all-time best action adventures. The graphics are beautiful and cartoony, remaining faithful to their comic origins, and the controls are second to none in ingeniously implementing Street Fighter quarter circle maneuvers to execute special moves. The stage design perfectly matches each character's skills and the music just kicks ass! If it wasn't for the lack of a dash option causing the protagonist to permanently amble along at a snail's pace, I would consider this to be flawless. As it is, Mutant Apocalypse is tied with Konami's X-Men for my favorite game in the franchise and I easily give it my highest seal of approval. There we have it, six X-Men titles that are definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of the franchise. Of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to everyone's favorite mutants, and I'm sure this video will receive a sequel in the future, but for now, it's time for another appearance in the IUPG court. Be sure to come back for that, but until then, this is Matt, aka Sigmus Destroyer 20XX, signing out. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, click any of the boxes on the screen right now and you'll be able to watch a few more of my videos. And if you haven't already, be sure to click that red box right there in the corner and that'll subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to keep up to date with all of my current content. Thanks again everyone.